Hello and welcome to the Album Man and I thought I'd do a little double track review because there's a couple of songs that yeah, I thought I'd, I'd talk about, give my, uh, give my two cents quite interestingly. So we have Lords of Summer by Metallica and Sweet Tea by California Breed. So let's start with Metallica as I'm, a few people want to know what my opinions on Lords of Summer Ah, well, so Metallica, if you somehow have managed to avoid this news, they finally unleashed a new song which they debuted on March the 16th, 2014, of course, in Bogota on their Metallica by Request tour. And now I know many reviewers have spoken about this track, but I really wanted, especially when it came out, but I wanted to wait for some official audio, which it has. We've received um, a garage demo and we've received official live audio. So that's cool. I can now really give it a fair. Um, a judgment and assessment instead of just using mobile phone bootlegs, which are crap quality. And I've had both positive and negative opinions regarding this song. So where do I stand? Well, I'll tell you. Now, let's start with the main riff of this song. I really like this. It reminds me at least of And Justice For All era Metallica. Um, though throughout the song I also get some load vibes as well. Still, it's a great driving, hard-hitting, quite thrashy riff, which it really is what I want from Metallica. And this song is heavy, which I'm pleased about. It has a very solid chorus, which again, is catchy, and uh, goes very well with the riff. And now if we get into some of the awesome, sort of smaller details, starting with Lars. Now it actually uses a double bass here, which is just damn awesome to hear. I'm very pleased he decided to do that. And not something I necessarily expected, considering how his drumming has been going downhill as of late and, well, the past quite a while, honestly. Though, um, yeah, and though if this does end up on the album, I hope he finds the ride symbol and uses it instead of the china, because that, that china just, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of it, certainly not with this song. I, I just don't think it works so well. Still, the highlight of this song has to be the epic double dueling guitar solo of James and Kirk. I mean, the actual dueling bit doesn't last all that long, but it's certainly fantastic when it did, and the build-up was really good. I definitely thoroughly enjoyed the solos here. So overall, I really like this song. I would be pleased if it was on the new album. I can definitely understand why some people say, oh, this sounds a bit too much like Death Magnetic. Um, it really does. It doesn't really do anything to build upon the sound found Death Magnetic, but I did enjoy Death Magnetic, so I can't really complain. And after the abomination of Lulu and, you know, I don't even count the Beyond Magnetic EP as really anything new. So Lulu effectively was the last new Metallica album. So it's nice to just hear something, well, good, I suppose. But yes, I definitely hope that they do something a bit different to Death Magnetic in the studio. Um, I certainly hope the reduction at least is fixed because Oh, I can't cope with an album that over-compressed and brick walled again. That just... Death Magnetic's hit the loudness water whole new levels. Let's hope it doesn't go there again. Still going to give this an 8 out of 10, this track. I definitely enjoyed it. Um, yeah, it's just a thoroughly good, solid Metallica track. You know, Nyinga's special with some of their classic songs, but no, I, I really enjoyed it. I did. Now, California Breeds Sweet Tea. So who are California Breeze and why am I you know, going out of my way to talk about one of their songs? Well, cast your mind back to 2010. And you may remember this little supergroup that formed called Black Country Communion. And they consisted of Glenn Hughes on vocals and bass, the ex Deep Purple on Sabbath vocalist, and one of the all-time great rock vocalists. Also Jason Bonham on drums, the son of the legendary John Bonham of Led Zeppelin fame. Dirk Sherinian on keyboards of Extreme Theatre, and a hugely talented guy. And lastly, the man that really turned this group into a tour de force, Joe Bonamassa. The guitarist extraordinaire, and in my opinion, the greatest guitarist that I've ever had in my life. Not only live, but in the studio. I think he's a greater guitarist than any of, um, you know, than even Paige and uh, I don't know why I'm thinking, or B.B. King even, and you know, the great guitarist, certainly. And, the, you know, they released a cracking debut album that really had that 70s purple Zeppelin vibe, but with an even bluesier edge and a unique and very distinct feel. I think they're one of the all-time great supergroups. And then this continued with the second album, um, Black Country Communion 2. Then, though, after 2, even though two wasn't as good as one, after two, the ego started to clash, 
the two big guys here, Bonamassa and Glenn Hughes. You know, there was touring plans and schedule overlaps. And tension started to brew, unfortunately. And then we saw Afterglow. And Afterglow was a bit more of a disjointed affair, written primarily by Hughes. Bonamassa's input was there, but quite negligible. And it was a pretty big disappointment I found. And then the band, it collapsed. It died. And now out of those ashes has risen a phoenix star, with Glenn Hughes and Jason Bonham teaming up with the guitarist Andrew Watt. Though unfortunately this phoenix seems to be full of decay and rot, and a shadow of its former self. If this song is anything to go by, Sweet Tea is coming out of time when there's a big boom in 70s style rock bands, this 70s rock revival. It's been, it's, you know, getting bigger with bands at the front, such as... Um, Rival Sons, um, St. Jude, um, Vintage Caravan, Graveyard, and of course Black Country Communion, really, you know, one of the earlier bands to um, take part in this particular sort of revival scene. And this song just feels like a Black Country Communion track that you wouldn't think anything of. I mean, it's decent, but compared to singles such as Great Divide, One Last Soul, is it anything? No. Or compared to Ordinary Song, or of course the Majestic Song of Yesterday? No. The guitarist Andrew Watt, he's competent. The solos and riffs he plays aren't anything that interesting. It's just bog standard 70s revival type stuff that, well, Black Coach Community did better, and so do Rival Sons and St. Jude and Vintage Caravan and the other bands I named before. Many bands did this better. And it's a shame. I mean, Glenn Hughes' voice is still. Fantastic, it's greater than any of the vocalists that those bands I mentioned have, well, except Flash Country Meaning, because of course it's the same guy. Uh, but yeah, the chorus is kind of catchy ish, but really, it's a bit of a disappointment, I have to say. I'm hoping on the rest of the album maybe they've, you know, kept the ace up their sleeve, but I'm doubtful. Joe Bonamassa was not a man to be easily.